Hello everybody, Reggie Time here and this is a special Friday video. I am playing some Pot Limit Omaha. I am not good at Pot Limit Omaha but fortunately I am playing in some games where my opponents are probably even fucking worse at Pot Limit Omaha than I am. So hopefully we won't lose too much and maybe, just maybe, we'll even book a win. Who knows? Um, dude's got a 70 V pip. Dude might have two pair if he does well. Fuck it. Or he might have a straight, I guess. We're betting here with our Jack Jack Ace Ace. Why did I say the Jack Jack first? That's like the totally irrelevant bit. <clears throat> so the tables we're playing here. This is like 30 cent, 60 cent PLO or 60 PLO. This is 40 PLO and 40 PLO. We started with 6,000 chips. Um, 4,000 chips and 4,000 chips so we're slightly up on the session at the moment um, these games play pretty shallow stacks as you can probably see um, <clears throat> on this table for example 3,000 chips will be 100 big blinds this one 4, uh, 2,000 and this one 2,000 so there aren't loads of deep stacked players but I think Payload's the sort of game that plays just fine shallow stacked and deep stacked it's kind of um, it's not as irritating as no limit in terms of like having short stacks around that are pushing in around free flop because you can just gamble with the fuckers anyway a lot more liberally. Remember listening to a very good player whose name escapes me years ago saying like PLO is a sort of game that plays really well like on a short stack like a cap game if you will or really well when it's super deep and doesn't lend itself to 100 big blind play you know as nicely as it does perhaps shallow stacked and and deep stacked. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but um, I, I understand what he was saying. So I'm, I'm way more happy playing um, some shallow stacked PLO than I am playing um, no limit games that are like particularly shallow stacked. Um, so yeah, I played last night. Um, I played the similar sort of games as I'm playing now. And um, I won $200, and I normally lose at PLO, so winning $200 has inspired me to reinvest some of that massive profit this morning and create a video. Now, I know that my PLO videos don't do us anywhere near as well in terms of views. Lots of you guys will have already turned off by now. So, um, yeah, I'm aware of that, but some, of you, some people will like PLO. It's a good opportunity for me to advertise the PLO games in these clubs to PLO players because... Um, as soft as PLO is everywhere, that many people won't have seen games quite as soft as these. And then, um, it's just my channel and I fancy making a PLO video, so I'm fucking making one. Um, so if you're still here, get the fuck in. You've got through three minutes of bullshit and um, hopefully we're going to see another 40 minutes or so of, um, let's just say, interesting PLO play, shall we? Because I don't think the quality is going to be too high. <clears throat> so let's just look around our table, see what we have in terms of V pips. 46, 69, 56, 75. Solid. 49, 60, 40. Boo, someone like myself. And um, 49. So another solid table. And then we've got um, 30. 51, uh, 68, 58 and 56, so 53 and 56, so yeah, if we can't win at these tables, we might never win long term at PLO, I'm not saying we're going to win this session, because who knows, it's PLO, or it's poker, any individual session um, can be a fucking car crash, but, I mean long term, if I can't, have a positive expected win rate in these games then it probably really is time to um, close down the um, close down the PLO dreams for good um, we're going to call this straddle he's probably going to raise and we're probably going to gamble with him anyway, 6 deuce 4 so we have a pair, backdoor flush draw, whatever and we've got a pot size bet so we just put him in. We are destroyed. And we're going to do some crying over it. Heart. Heart. 
Oh no, we lost about 80 cents there. In 40 slash 5, that's almost a good player for these games. I mean, obviously it's not a good player, but it's almost a good player. It's it's tightish. We're obviously going to be um, bumping it up with our King Queen Jack double suited. And then we get a flop we even remotely like the look of. We'll be committing. We'll be marrying it. Taking it down the aisle. Yeah, I think we like the look of that flop. And we're going to bet about 270 and not fold. And in she goes. And we are a 60% favourite. And we lose. Boo. Boo, 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 boo. Why didn't they just jam that flop, by the way? Do not understand. You flop the nut flush draw. And I think they had a wheel draw too. <clears throat> and they decided to just, just call. Uh, I'm not a big fan of over limping, but we'll do it because we have that, the nut flush draw. Um... It's not a very good hand, it's not a very attractive hand, then this fucker just min raises out of the small blind. Good for him. And we flop what I'm going to consider to be the nuts. And if it's not the nuts, then never mind. Uh, we're not going to bother making a small bet in a multi way pot, we're just going to hammer pot and... Well, I expected someone to maybe have a little look. But, um... Obviously not. I think maybe we could have bet that turn actually, come to think of it, after the flop checks through with our double gut shot. I think betting would have been better than doing what we're going to do now, which is check call. And um, we just make two pair. It's a bad river, I think. Don't think we're going to be check calling large bets here. Dude just had a... What, what did he beat us there with? Did he have a bigger two pair or something? Sometimes don't even fucking know. Will this tell me what he had? Yeah, he had a bigger two pair, he had the jack. He had the jack and the queen. And we didn't have a hand that could beat the jack and the queen. Motherfucker! Pissing down here today, which is lovely, because that fucking cretin of a prime minister thought it'd be a good idea to reopen the fucking pubs when we're still riddled with coronavirus. And I think, and a religious man... But if everyone's going to convert, today might be the day because it looks to me like fucking God's tears are pouring down all over my town. Um, and it's probably God's tears that he's managed to create a situation where we have Boris Johnson and Donald Trump in high office at the same fucking time. Um, so he's sending his tears down to prevent fuckwits going to the fucking pub at the weekend. And um, for that, God, I thank you. Hey, are you a fish? He just keeps typing the same old shit in this dude. Um, here's six, seven, eight. Yeah, we'll give you a spin, dude. You're fucking crazy enough. 75, 24. Why not? <clears throat> we'll give you a spin with our kind of rundown-ish, suited-ish sort of thing. Somehow we managed to get it in good. With just ace nine high. Are we going to stay good? Who even knows? He's 90% now, that's not good. He's 100%. Don't 
don't know what the fucker was doing in this hand. Don't know what the fucker was doing at any point. That was possibly one of the worst played hands I've ever done in my life. Just over with who knows what and who knows why. And then just checked it down like a fucking idiot. Focus, Reggie. Focus. We haven't got a fourth table off camera today because <clears throat> unlike No Limit, these PLO games don't tend to break up very often. There's usually a like, wait list for them once they fill and um, fish tend to reload more often. So I don't think we're going to need a backup table off camera. I mean, if you are a PLO player, you're going to learn fuck all about PLO from me. Apart from, hopefully, learning about these games that are available to you at the touch of a button by messaging me. We're going to do a lot of raising here. We're raising this one. We're going to be three betting this one. Or squeezing it as it now is. Happy to just keep clicking raise until all the money goes in with this hand against people with remarkably high V-pips. <clears throat> 864 Rainbow. That is the most disappointing flop we might see all day. Give up. See bet in here with our not much. Once he calls, we're pretty much done with it because we're drawing just to a king. Still checking. Um, and when it's not going to bluff, he's just too likely has some random ASX. Like that one that isn't folding. Well played, sir. King 8, Jack 5. Well done. Look at these games. <clears throat> and I promise you I'm not going to get remotely salty in this video because, to be honest, recently I've been on, like, the biggest heater. Um... Well, we know what this guy calls three bets with, so why not? We're on the biggest heat, so <clears throat> I really can't complain. If I drop a hundred or so dollars in doing a PLO video when I'm enjoying myself, then um, I will very much just live with that because I think to be going pretty good. You want to go all in? Do it then, sir. Do it. So, yeah, I'm not going to complain. I, I know what I'm going to get in these games. We're going to be in games with... So, um absolutely terrible players and the variance short term is going to be it's going to be there um i already know that really couldn't care i uh, just want to have fun hopefully showcase the games in a good light and create some interesting content for you guys who have stuck around we're just going to keep potting it here <clears throat> um i mean we're only behind two sets right now but obviously you can have a ton of equity against us still and she does. He doesn't get there though. We win. Happy days. Happy, happy days. I love all these shitty little default. Um, well, I can say I love them. I think it's amusing. Cause, because obviously, <clears throat> well, I think it's because a lot of them are speaking in Filipino. They just have some like default chat messages, right? This guy plays 83 slash 5 in his 3 bet. He probably has aces, but this dude's in two, so we'll have a look. Now we've flopped a huge draw, so we're just going to pot it. I uh, don't know if this is good play or bad play, but it, how bad can it be? He does have aces. We have a ton of equity against aces. We haven't got there yet, though. And we didn't get there. I think when I put the clickbait title action packed PLO session 
it will not well it will be a clickbait title but it will be incredibly accurate too and the wheels just keep sitting we opened this table from scratch where we opened i think we opened all three tables from scratch i think and we've been joined by two regs so there's 15 seats across the tables we started for our opponents to sit in and only two of them are taken by remotely tight players all i need to do now is not play like an absolute cunt and we should be okay i just need to take a phone call I've been muted for a few seconds Sorry about that, it was just a, a phone call from a young man who was meant to be seen today's mum. Um, I phoned her early because the weather's shit and he likes to go to the beach and go and have an ice cream and stuff and it's just not that kind of day. So um, we're seeing him Sunday now instead, so that's all good. Let's get back to it. I'd have enjoyed seeing the back door hearts come in then just for the brutality of it. But nope, sadly. I do not sadly, I suppose. There's no reason why I should give a fuck which one of them wins. Double suited aces. Watch these bad boys get cracked. Wouldn't like to see this guy dunk here, but we are going to bet now he doesn't. And I think this bet probably commits us to calling should he be running some elaborate trap. Which he wasn't doing. That's where the sevens were. Out of the blue had them all. Hey, dear me.
surely R5 doesn't win here. Surely R5 doesn't win. No, it doesn't. Didn't think it could possibly win. That was a private Alexa reminder there, so we had to mute. It's nothing personal, just reminded me to speak to somebody who maybe wouldn't want their name on YouTube. Already spoken to that person though, so the reminder was redundant. Jack me up. Sounds dreadful, doesn't it? It's like a heroin reference, isn't it? Um, I'm going to check with our set here, I think. I don't think we're going to get value from much, but we'll put a small bet out there and see what happens. Nine seems like it's a pretty bad river. Might be nitty, but we're just going to check back. And we lose to the flush. <laughs> Don't give me all this three to a suit nonsense. What the fuck is going on here? Uh, I think we're just going to tap out of it. Because this cunt might re-raise again. And then it all just goes a bit silly. He went. I think limp round with it. But I don't can't fucking remember. But. Yeah, it was mental. It was like raise, call, call, click back, min, fucking pot, whatever. I don't fucking know. Anyway, this guy's got aces. That's all we need to know. He hasn't got aces. He's definitely got kings. Not even buying it this time. I mean, the Ace King's pretty, but the 9 4 is fucking hideous. I mean, maybe that's a mistake, but I, I thought maybe, you know, we call the 60, then one of these fucking morons puts a little shitty raising again. Uh, before you know it, you just torched a little bit more money off with a hand that you probably no business playing anyway. I'd have been all over that when I was first transitioned to PLO. I'd just in the Ace King suited and I would have not given a fuck that the 9 and the 4 were incredibly damaging and your son had been blinded by the ace king and would have been seeing flops at pretty much any price here's a hand we can play i'm in love with low cards at plo but in these games fuck it i think like deep stacked plo you don't really want too many low cards because if all the money goes in deep stacked uh, your draws are usually going to be pretty shit. But I think in a um, shallow stack PLO, um, it's fine. You can just stack off lighter with draws because um, people are going to be stacking off lighter with like one pair and things because that, the SPR is going to be slower. But if you're playing like 300 blinds deep and you get it in there with like a 5, 6, 7, 8 or whatever, um, you're going to be getting it in against dominating draws and sets and things way too often. Whereas if you... That, 20 to 25 blinds deep it's a good chance you might just get it in against top pair and, or what have you and have like reasonable equity against it and never get blown off your equity either so I'm more than happy playing them um, in shallower games I think in deeper games probably shouldn't be playing them Again, my thought process could be very my thought process could be very flawed there, but it makes sense to me. It seems like a reasonable 
conclusion to draw from when to play and when not to play those types of hands. I'm going to take a little stab at this if it checks to us. And to get them off any random equity they have. And I'm not sure what random equity they will have on that board. That could be, again, bullshit from me. Um, obviously, we're not going to be putting any more money in now. Once we get called, we've only got second pair. And, and the obvious draw gets there. And we're probably maybe just going to lose here to like a king or something, but never mind. Oh, maybe we're going to win against the 4 7 queen 5. Maybe. Maybe that works too. <clears throat> Scotch is the. Um, we're going to get smallish to fold, ran to fold random equity there, doesn't it? Because that's probably the sort of hand we would. Happy to see him fold there with his like one over card to our pair, etc. But um, yeah, that didn't work, but it worked out anyway. going to see a four way all in no we're not at the ace jack versus the flush draw versus the gut shot and the flush draw wins it all <laughs> and where's one fish leaves another one cannot wait to replace him flush draw here and we would have been paying to see if we could get there This fucker with his random min raises out of the blinds. He loves it. You know, man's having a lot of fun. And I like that. I like it having fun. The least we can expect, um, hope for for the massive whales is they're having fun whilst they're um, contributing. three bet this guy very liberally got the six seven nine three three flush isn't going to be one of the ones we do it with flop and open end here but only one ends to the nuts do have some back doors as well though so we're going to tear one off and see what happens <coughs> we'd like a nice eight of diamonds instead we turn the non nuts um, I think we can still bet for some value though. <laughs> I 
I think it's a very good spot just to bet fold. Easiest fold of my life. Delighted to be able to three bet this dude with King King Queen Ten. In fact, we're over the moon to do it. If this guy is fortunate enough to have a four in his hand, he's going to get a nice double up. I'm not in love with the situation. Not in love with it. And the call and fold on clubs, I think, and call on anything else except an ace. Uh, we'll be here, aren't we, I think, but the guy is such a nutter. Then um, we're going to give him some value. Ace, ten, three, five. Happy days. Happy days, happy days, happy days. It was a nice pickup. That was just a little bit. That deuce was, I don't know, maybe a, a ten or something. I think we'd have um, given him a spin there. I'm going to pop up a limper with a very, very, very marginal hand. <laughs> and we're going to get remarkably disappointing flop but we're gonna we're gonna take a stab anyway because we know a chance we win at showdown actually pick up a little bit of equity here now um not gonna bet again just giving up here not gonna try and bluff all the draws missed and don't expect him to fold a king or something so we're just gonna give up Maybe we maybe we could have got him off that, I'm not sure but not too fussed. As I said at the start of the video, I'm not a good PLO player. I just expect that I'm better than this lot. And that's all you need to be. To be a winning player, you don't need to be good. You just need to be better than the people you're playing with. <clears throat> I mean you put me in a in a £50, £100 blind game with my mum, my sister and my daughter and I'd grind it. Although, to be fair, I'd probably have to pay my, my daughter's buy-in so um, probably wouldn't make that much money. Queen 9, 9, 10. Probably not an open under the gun but we're doing it. <laughs> if anyone starts to cover us on this table, we will chop our stack back up. At the moment, though, we still have over 100 big blinds, so... And we have everybody covered, so there's no reason to do it. Uh, again, we'll just try it, taking a stab here, but not mega hopeful it will succeed. That's fine. 
Let's have the hook cheap. Be careful here against the regular. We have flopped two pair with the back door flush draw, so we're going to be calling if he bets. And we're going to be betting now he's checked. This dude's gone all in. We finally bust it. Well, we haven't busted, but someone's finally busted him. Six on the turn. This goes going all in. I mean, obviously, we call. We're slightly ahead. Oops, and then I've just randomly folded by mistake over here when I didn't need to. I mean, we would have been folding anyway to that bet, but that was misclick central. I misclicked, it gave me the opportunity to undo the misclick, and then I misclicked again. Well done, Reg, you fucking genius. Oh, we like this one. This one's going to get, well, it was going to get three bet if it was raised, but now it's just getting opened. Uh, we have a cut short, and we have a backdoor flush draw. Door that gets enough to see bet into two players. We have a top set over here. No reason to bet small and slow play against people with V-pips like that. Um, we're going to fold our gutter ball on table three. Another hand here that we're going to be more than happy to play. From almost any position, but certainly on the button. We'll be peeling versus three bets because I'm a fish. Even though it's very likely my hand will be dominated versus three bet ranges. I'd give zero fucks. We'll be doing it anyway. Pretty shit flop. So we're going to be checking. Checking here too with our gut shot and some backdoor equity. Wouldn't want to get like racy and blown off our hand. So we have the nut flush draw here now and an open ender. Not going to race though. And we river the. Well, what's basically the nuts, don't we? Someone's got the straight flush. If someone's got the jack, the jack, the queen ten of clubs or whatever it is, then hallelujah. Oh, we're going to fold. We've got the second nuts. That is unfortunate, but we'll take it. Limp raise by a regular. Is it limp raise? No, it's not. It's just squeezed out of the big blind. Um, gonna let it go. It's not that attractive, to be frank. And I just said, to be frank, anyone who's a Duesenberg watcher will realise how ironic that is, given how often I've criticised him for using that particular terminology. Get the seven nine five eight out. Get there. Hold. Boom! It did as well. It did indeed hold. I like that. That's funny. 
love seeing regs get felt well not felted but i love seeing regs doubling wheels up absolutely love to see it the only thing i'd love to see more is michelle key the top of michelle keegan's head going up and down somewhere near my pelvic region i think that's maybe the only view i'd like to see more ever so we have top pair and a nut flush draw against a reg who might be steaming. Don't mind calling here, letting this guy come along with some weaker draws too. We now have two pairs. I think we're probably behind to this dude, but how can we fold? I want mouse behind to this dude. And he's blocking our outs, which is unfortunate. That was a nice spot for him, wasn't it? Oh, what a nice spot for him. Oh, dear me. I think we'll just keep recording for a bit. I know that, you know, very few people get to the end of a long video. So, effectively, by this time of the video, I'm probably speaking to maybe 10 viewers, but... I'm enjoying myself and for the guys that are still here watching and I'm sure they won't mind and extra long bit of content maybe we'll go I think my wife's due home in about 35 minutes from work so we'll, we'll play until midday which is 38 minutes from now and then um, we'll wrap it up We are up at every table, which is nice. We're up at 2,400, 3,600, 4,300, and every thousand is $20. So we're up $80 at the moment. Obviously not for the video because we, we were already playing before the video started, but I'm up $84 on the session so far. And we've flopped a top set on a very dynamic board where we may already be beat. But um, we're not giving any free cards on this board. If we get raised, we'll just try and outrun the Jack 10. They keep mashing the pot button. I think if he had Jack 10, he probably would have raised the flop. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he's raising now. He doesn't have the jack 10. He's got one out. Oh, man. He hit it as well. Sweet. Oh, we got a jackpot, though. So that's a bonus. I uh, still lost money on the hand, I think. But the jackpot offset a lot of our losses. So we're not going to complain too much about that. Um, we obviously, we'd rather have won the pot because we'd have just won more money. But if you're going to get one outed, it is nice to see them just drop. Um, what did you get to it? Twenty nine hundred there. So they dropped sixty dollars bad beat bonus on us. So yeah, that was like oh no! I didn't even know the bad beat jackpot was a thing. So. Um, we've gone from thinking we just lost like a $60 pot or a $120 pot as it was to um, to the club redeeming itself by giving me the bonus. I haven't been one outward on video for, well, maybe not ever. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But that was exciting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
You see how cool I was about it, though, you know. He is one out there, and I just went, oh, man. You know, back in the day, that would have resulted... My, my phone's in front of me on my laptop. Something would have been broke there, back in the day, unquestionably. I'd have either reached out and fucking leathered the wall with my fist, or I'd have banged my laptop hard, or I'd have fucking thrown something. And now I just say, oh, man, and crack on. Which is a testament to the incredibly hard work I put in on my mental game um, during my poker journey. I think I've probably worked harder on my mental game than than um, anything else in poker. Obviously, I try and I, I consume content, and I I don't study poker hard like the modern way of study. I used to when um, back in the day. But since the advent of solvers and shit, my interest in studying poker has fucking dropped hugely. I'm just not remotely interested by it. Um, but yeah, I still obviously consume content. I watch what these guys are up to. I try and understand what it is that they're doing. Um, so I can kind of know what's going on at the table at least a little bit. But um, yeah, I'm not going to try and learn it for myself because it just doesn't interest me. Uh, but yeah, I'm always trying to stay aware of like, um, I'm always trying to add to my, what I believe is impressive mental game. And what do we do here? This guy's just dunked into us. We're behind. We know that much. We only have the flush draw. Maybe a queen. It's like a, it's a small bet. Ah, yeah, fuck it. Everyone else is going to come along too, probably, aren't they? So we're probably going to get reasonable odds. And we're not even behind to this guy. We're just behind to this guy instead. Never mind. One of those spots where if we were all deeper stacked, then um, that would have been a pretty easy fold, but... Um... Given the stacks that were in play, I think it was a pretty easy call. I mean, look at these games. I mean, fair enough, there's not a lot of money kicking around in them. You know, like, whatever that is. $13, $12. Uh, even less. Even less. But it's dead money, isn't it? It's just lots and lots of dead money. And, um... It's just really relaxing and a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the dude who won out with us has now taken his fat stack and his absurd VPIP and PFR somewhere else. I wonder if that pot now, because we won the insurance tip, well, we won the jackpot. Does it now show me he's like losing at this table? No, it doesn't. It still show me as being up, but it's like the jackpot thing, isn't it? I see. I understand. So we are currently only up 1,400, 2,700. We're still up 30, we're still up 60, 60 odd dollars. And what I really like about these PLO games more than lots of the sites is these sites, these clubs, they only have a three big blind cap. So, unlike a lot of places, the games are fucking raked to death. So you play like PLO and Poker Stars, they have the same 5% rake, but um, I think their cap's like two dollars fifty or five blind I'm not sure exactly sure how it works with, with the caps but what I do know is that um the three big blind cap which is standard in pretty much all of these clubs I don't think I work with any club that has a bigger than three big blind cap it makes an enormous difference due to how much rake you play how much rake you pay and on top of that you're getting twenty five percent rake back so you know you really is a good place to play PLO because A, the games are so soft, B, the rake is gentle, and C, 
you actually get rate back to flat rate back on your pay you don't have to like it's not like fucking know you're gonna play so much to win a shitty chest or whatever you just get 25 percent flat rate back on on your play whether that's 10,000 hands a week or whether it's 1,000 hands a month these clubs in my opinion really are represent a big part of the future of online cash game poker yeah they're a bit dicey in terms of the unregulated so things can go wrong um, I guess governments at some point could try and shut them down but I think they're going to be probably quite hard to shut down because they just like they span loads of countries all the money transactions are done like peer to peer if you will person to person there's no like big institutions so who knows I mean I think these games are here for a very very long time um, and they're getting safer and safer but I do think um at least in the short term, if you're a cash game grinder, no limit peel or whatever, you should be strongly considering like migrating to to these environments and just accepting that sometimes some shit might happen and you might lose a portion of your bankroll. But overall, um, you stand to make a lot more money long term if you're just willing to take the chance. <laughs> I've got terrible wind today too. I think that's what happens when you have an omelette sandwich at about 3am. Probably could have gone bigger here. Maybe I should have gone bigger. That was a bit lazy just hitting the three quarter pot button. It's a little bit lazy. But it doesn't matter. Because we got away with it. Should go back and find that hand, shouldn't it, that we got cooler done. So I can post that for my own amusement to groups that I'm in. That's the one. Woohoo, we have an absolutely useless flush draw. Thirty-seven eight, aren't we tagging you, dude? And it would give you that tag, I think. Very rarely used tagging the PLO streets. That is typically safe for my like um tight fish no limit type players like that the 27 slash 6 types and what have you it's a very rare outing in the PLO street
That's a top set and a shit flush draw. Even we block the draws, I'm going to be a bit smaller. Try and get him to stick around with like a king or something. Or like a jack-10, jack-queen type hand. It's actually a bad card. So we're going to check. I mean, we can't check call. So I'm going to um, block bet against like maybe some worse sets or something that maybe want to call Other people just go out of the way here to make our decision really easy, which they have done. It's Queen, we've got him dominated. We've got him dominated, and now we're an 87% favourite, which we like to see. I'm not sure we do have them dominated. I just saw the eight. We had we shared three cards, and my jack was better than his seven. I'm not sure that constitutes domination, to be frank, but that felt like it was a jack against a seven type situation there. Why am I not in this pot? Why am I not in this fucking pot? Doesn't matter because we didn't have that much in the end. But why was I not in it? What is going on? Why did I just fold that hand on the button? That happens quite a lot of that comments in my videos. Why did you fold a full house at 1657, Reg? Uh, because, idiot. Not concentrating. If you ever see me making an outrageous fold that I do not comment on, you can naturally assume that I've just not known what the fuck my hand is and I've been autopiloting. No. Definitely no. Let's do a little test to see who's still watching on the hour mark. <clears throat> please do. If you are still watching, please set the time to respond to because it will help me 
understand just how many people are still watching an hour into my videos. Um, please, in the comments section, type in the name of the famous poker player that you dislike the most. Mine is unquestionably Justin Bonomo, who comes across as somebody, and I'm not a violent man, but he comes across as somebody I could happily kick in the bollocks until my foot fell off. Such a smug, fucking, ah, yeah, he's a cunt, basically. He basically, his Twitter handle, or whatever you call it, bio, fucking profile, whatever the fuck it is, a little bit that you can say something about yourself, openly states that he enjoys shagging more than one person at once, which is not a bad thing, but why would you put that on Twitter? Yeah, he's just a cunt. He's just a cunt. We have a shit hand here. Um, and we just have a hand here that we're going to pot and get in because these guys have no money and if one of them's got a three then I'm absolutely delighted for them. Oh, the three is out there. The six, G whatever the fuck it is, six, six, jack three. Get in there, son. Um, we're also now losing to a straight here on table one, but we don't care about that. Uh, again, not a big fan of peeling on buttons, but don't think I want to isolate with this hand. Or try to isolate, should I say. And then we have a regular just leading straight out, which means he's either got a very strong made hand or a very strong draw. We have neither, so we're going to fold. Stab here with our queens on table two. And he flopped two pairs, turned a boat and decided to start checking and saved himself some money, which I'm surprised by. This guy's check min raised. We're just going to rip a queen off on the turn, aren't we? No, we're not. Okay, we're not going to rip a queen off on the turn. So now we're done. Would have been nice just to rip a queen. Here comes a pot size bet in a minute. The tank pot, is it? Is the tank pot coming? Oh, the tank pot didn't come. I'm not biting though. We're not biting here. We're going to check back. Check, min, raise, check. That is either someone trying like an elaborate double check raise line or someone who's just giving up most of the time. What? What the actual fuck? Did I mention these games were quite good and they were full of players who were like just utter morons? If I didn't, then yeah, I'm mentioning it now. Cut shot, backdoor flush draw. Not betting. And now we're done. Again, we have a double gut shot this time. Then we're going to take a little stab. Don't really want to rather. We're going to put money in and rather bet than check call.
Get the fuck on with it. And not convinced this is an open, but in these games, don't think it can be terrible. No good drags to punish our loose opens from early position in the games. Well, this dude, but we have position on him, so I can live with it. Uh, I think we have a check calling handy with our second pair, no kicker and weaky straw. We improved to a good shot as well on the turn. Just going to continue checking. Can't fall if he bets. And we river a flush, which we are going to bet and fall to a raise. I guess I should start calling time on tables that I haven't already called time on. The call time feature is um, something that prevents players hitting and running. I quite like it, especially when so many players buy in short. It prevents people just being able to buy in and then um, double up and leave instantly. Uh, the call time feature means you you have to like alert the table 15 minutes before you intend to leave, which I like. It can be annoying if you forget to hit it and you're in profit and you want to end your session and you've got to extend for an extra 15 minutes. That can be annoying. But overall, I like the feature. I mean, all you have to do basically is uh, someone like myself who's who's playing and like intends to put a session and the minute you go like one chip in profit, you just click the call time button and then you're free to leave whenever you want at the end of your session because you've already clicked the button. So it doesn't prevent you from leaving when you want if you're planning on putting a, a normal session size in. It does prevent people from coming, like this dude, buying in for the minimum, doubling up and then running away. He's got to play for at least 15 minutes with a stack that presumably he'll be less comfortable with because he's buying in for the minimum to begin with. So I like the feature. I know it can annoy some people, but I think overall it's a good feature rather than a bad one. There's more positives to it than there is negatives. When we got to more annoying than that, you know, a whale sucks out on you in a huge pot. And it instantly leaves, at least this way, unless they've already hit the core time themselves. Um, the force to stick around for 15 minutes to allow you to try and tap into the to the big stack that they were fortuitous enough to win. So I think we'll use the um, the call time at the end of the video. We've got 13 minutes, 10 seconds to the end of the video, which is going to slightly run into perhaps when my wife gets home, but. I just told her I just told her to shut the fuck up for three minutes if she comes in and starts trying to tell me things about her day that I have to pretend to be interested in when I'm not. I'd love to be able to stick at these games and there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to um, because they are very soft and the variance is much lower because of the stack depths of the, my opponents. I'd love to be able to stick at these games and then maybe even feel confident enough to move up in them and play like the 50 cent dollar games which would assumedly be the same as these where there's lots of players with like 20 and 30 dollar stacks where you know, even if we do run bad in a session and, you know, we lose lots of all-ins, we maybe only lose two buy-ins rather than losing eight buy-ins or something. I think I'd like that a lot. I'm not going to make any plans to do that because, let's face it, I've made so many plans in the past with PLO and never stuck to any of them, but maybe, maybe this time we can make it work.
What usually happens when I play a PLO is I enjoy it for a while and then get bored playing Hold'em. And then I go on a big downswing at PLO and can't wait to run back to the less exciting Hold'em games. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if we follow that pattern at some point in the next few days or weeks. But for the time being, I'm enjoying myself. So PLO might be my game of choice for the next two days, two weeks, two months. Depending on how it goes. A straddle. I don't really want to give a nick like this action. But we've got such a pretty hand that we're going to. I mean he's in for like six blinds. So it doesn't matter anyway really. It just. Bores my piss when. They double up. When they're just playing so. Uninterestingly. We've got a very disappointing flop here. We need a lot of help. And, oh, we have received a lot of help. I didn't realise we had top pair. We didn't need that much help. I just thought we'd flopped nothing. He's betting now. I mean, let's see how we can fold. And then we river the nuts. Just make sure it is the nuts before I do anything stupid. 10, 10, 7. There's no straight flush out there. We do have the nuts. So we're all in. And he now knows his goose is cooked. Call it. Call it. Have pocket fours. Yep, not surprisingly he had aces. And he got absolutely reamed. Delightful. I'm even going to throw him a turd. Eh. Eat my turd. Delightful sentence. No whale here that's raised. We have some pretty weak aces, but we're going to three bet them anyway. <clears throat> Pop a good shot. I think we're going to check call to start with. Now, this in theory is a good spot because we can like just theoretically check shove with our nut blocker, but I don't think we're deep enough for that to work and I don't think this is the type of play we want to be trying it against anyway. So it's way more likely I'm just gonna... I mean, every bone in my body wants to just rip it in his face here. It's just the right play, isn't it? It's just the right play. So we're going to do it. Fold! Happy days. This has been fun. And we're up a bunch of money as well, which is nice. 6,000, 7,300 or so. That's like over $140. Dollars.
pretty. Again, we're going to kick this off with a check, I think. Some very similar situation to last time. We have a good shot and we have like the not flush draw blocker. This time our opponent doesn't bet. I'm just going to continue checking, I think. And we're over the nuts, but it looks like we're not going to get much action. I'm going to check one more time, try and get a check raise in against maybe a worse straight. Nope. Nope, never mind. And we're going to fold here on table one. Go for the isolation on table three. We are 4 minutes 52 seconds away from drawing the session to a conclusion. And here we haven't flopped that well. Got a good shot. And we're going to fold. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've certainly enjoyed making it. I mean, it's hard to not enjoy it when you when you run pretty good. It's hard to say you run pretty good when you got one out of it, but yeah, I've enjoyed myself. It's been fun. I hope you guys have found it fun too. I will continue to make no limit videos even if I play way more PLO for the for the coming days and weeks. We've got one more. A video from the 100 nl video that I made the other day, uh, the session I played the other day to come. That will probably go out on Monday now, I think, because this, this, I was going to put it out today or tomorrow, but now we've got this one going out today, then Monday seems like a good day to put that one out. Start next week off with a 100 nl finale video. I'm not sure this is a good open, but we're making it anyway. <laughs> Again, don't think there's too many bad opens in games this passive and this soft. We just have a bluff catcher here on the river. And there were two pairs. I'm not calling if your bet's big. We'll call if your bet's like 60 or less. And I think this isn't a great open, but we're winding the video up, so we're going to try and... I end. I don't want the video to just fizzle out, basically. I think this is probably the last blind we're going to be putting in, though, at this table. Yeah, we've just two minutes left. We won't bring any more blinds in at any table. So this table we can now stand up from, lock up a 240 chip profit. This one will have to play another round, I think. Unless these guys take a minute and a half to play this handout, which seems remarkably unlikely.
in a bit here with our weakish two pair. He absolutely snap called, which makes me think I'm probably ahead, but that turn cab would have changed things quite dramatically. I don't think we even need to block better here with a hand as weak as this. We can just try and check it down and probably lose, I guess, but not expect him to fold any better hands. This guy Mindonks on this board. I'm going to take the bait. Oh, not that much though. Uh, uh. Just call now, I guess, because couldn't get me raising properly, and now we're just going to fault the turn because our hands absolutely bobbins. Well played, Reg. Wifey is home. So that timing's been pretty good. So I think because wifey's home, we'll wrap it up now. We've got nothing left to play for on any of these tables. So take care, everybody. Hope you've really enjoyed the video. I've really enjoyed making it. Have a fantastic weekend. And we'll be back on Monday, probably, with the um, end of the 100 Nell three-session videos. Take care, everybody. And bye-bye for now.